Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and I want you to go open a tab right now, and let's check how many extensions you have installed. Do you remember installing all of them? Now, of course, this is VM, so I don't actually have any to demonstrate this. Uh, could you tell me what they're for? Uh, do you know who makes them? Well, unfortunately, today we're going to be talking about massive amounts of extensions that turned into malware. Now, turned into is the operative word here. We're not talking about extensions like I've shown before, and there's kind of two ways that will happen. Either they will simply typo squat, or maybe like, let's say with uBlock Origin, the extension will get taken down, and of course there is a legitimate replacement, uBlock Origin Lite, uh, that's actually real, but someone thought, okay, what if I could upload an extension and call it uBlock Origin, and it would be a fake? That's one way or edit this cookies as we looked at about a year ago. Unfortunately, what's happening here is different. Now, Chrome extensions are very hard to monetize in most cases. By monetize, I mean like make money. So that means developers will sometimes either abandon them or think, okay, how could I make some money doing this? And unfortunately, what's happening is shady entities are going around offering money to buy out an extension and then adding malware. Now, this has been happening on a small scale, but it seems like Shady Panda, <laughs> as Koi Research are calling them, uh, have really gotten off to the races on. Now, some of these are basically doing the browser equivalent of a rat, running hourly, downloading and executing arbitrary JavaScript with full browser access. Now, as you know, in the modern world, so much of what we do is in the browser, right? You know, I'm managing my YouTube channel in the browser. Uh, if you're into crypto, you're doing your DeFi in the browser. You do your online banking in the browser. So an extension has a lot of the same power that a spyware would uh, but it also, unfortunately, doesn't have as much eyes on it. So first of all, uh, we're just going to do a quick break for our sponsor. Malware hides in the places you'd expect, and plenty you wouldn't. Browser extensions are commonly installed and just as quickly forgotten. But in today's browser-driven world, they're every bit as dangerous as traditional software. That's why this video is sponsored by ThreatLocker, the zero-trust cybersecurity solution that blocks threats by default. Extensions included. Instead of chasing every possible threat, ThreatLocker flips the model. You choose what's allowed, and it blocks everything else without explicit approval. How it works? Three easy steps. One, install ThreatLocker. It starts in learning mode, observing the software you need. Let it learn. It maps the apps, scripts, services your team actually uses. And step three, switch to protected mode, and anything unrecognized is is denied by default. ThreatLocker maintains a live list of approved applications, so the updates you trust keep rolling, and its patch management tells you when unpatched software could put your business at risk, and it doesn't stop at allow or deny. With application-level ring fencing, you can lock applications to specific folders and resources, remove internet access from tools that don't need it, and control exactly how approved software is allowed to behave. Ready to move from reactive to proactive security? Strengthen your organization's security posture today at threatlocker.com slash Eric Parker. Now back to the video. Now one of these extensions was apparently featured and verified by Google. Let's see. I think it is gone now. Hopefully it's gone. But CleanMaster was supposed to clean up your PC and clean up your Chrome, and uh, it was extremely trusted. Now some of these keeps tabs and it records everything you're doing sends it all off to servers in China. Now, WeTab was another popular extension, and let me just see if we can go to Archive and find what was here. Now, this one looks a lot like the spam network that we found a year ago, and this one doesn't look like it's pretending. It looks like it's quite open about the fact this is Chinese, so it's a widget-based that allows you to create. So it's basically a new tab page, and it had 3 million users. Interesting. And let's see we can find the privacy policy. Now this is going to be the Chinese privacy policy, there could also be an English one, uh, and we can see here uh, Chongqing Sentinel Ecommerce Co. Limited, and there uh, we tab AI, AI translation, AI PowerPoint generation. Now I don't quite understand what AI, what all this AI has to do uh, with a, a aesthetic new tab. So we got Okay, so it looks like they've just got a completely generic privacy policy that isn't really relevant to uh, the actual program. Now, let's see if we go to wetab.link. Do we get, is there anything left? Oh, they've actually got a response. So we will take a look at that. Now, is there any of this still up? Oh, it looks like there is still a new wetab up. Uh, but let's let's read their uh, response. We'll, we'll go through this as well. 
So the wallpaper hustle. So these were the wallpaper extensions like what we just looked at. And here we've got kind of a replica of what the Honey app was recently accused and actually beat their law. But unlike the Honey app, they're not providing any useful services and they don't disclose. I mean, we just read the privacy policy. They don't tell people that they're doing this. Uh, this phase wasn't sophisticated. Uh, so they learned Chrome doesn't check the first, after the first review, uh, users trust extensions and patience pays off. So then they tried some new methods. Every web search was going through Trovi, a browser hijacker. So that means they're both recording every search you're making, and they're probably injecting their own ads that pay them. And this is more concerning. This is essentially what an info stealer does. They're taking your cookies, they're sending them to a gibberish domain. Uh, and let's see, uh, your, I don't know what your new tab is, and this is probably being used for. Uh, Ads. These extensions, they were being taken down, and these were all, I guess, they would home grow these extensions, maybe they would vibe code them, or maybe they would, like, actually develop them, but and not, this wasn't scalable. This was, this was working, but it wasn't, wasn't going to make them rich. So then they switched to buying extensions. So they push this in, uh, and now these are all malicious. So this was a speed test extension that would help you test your internet performance without having to go to another website. So this one, it would call this API. <laughs> oh, that's that's hilarious. Uh, so uh, in this uh, spicy named JavaScript, uh, they would fetch new configuration, and then it would Let's see where the execution is. So it would actually just be downloading code remotely. Now this should never be allowed in an extension. And as a result, that also means that security researchers cannot reliably determine what the actual intended fraud is. So uh, this monitors everything and exfiltrates everything. So this is basically, if you've ever seen the videos where I would use MITM proxy to monitor potential spying, this is doing that without secretly without your permission. So that's a huge concern. And then they encrypt it manually so that you won't be able to tell what they're doing. So uh, stops doing malicious behavior when you uh, open that. Uh, it's man in the middle in you. And now they got five big extension. We tab, of course, which we're going to take a look at. So this is a stunning pattern of success. Now, I actually got a reach. I, I, I actually got someone who'd worked in China on one of these browser hijackers. I'm not going to say which one actually did reach out to me talking about how they did it and sort of how they would build it, mainly around monetizing with ads and trying to toe the line such that it wouldn't constitute malware, but it would be functionally pretty malicious. So here we have from these people, and they actually posted this on WeChat, explanation regarding recent security reports mentioning browser extensions such as CleanMaster, WeTab, and Infinity. A recent security report released by a foreign security company linked browser extensions to a long-term malicious campaign. Some outlets have followed up with further reports, raising concerns among users about the data security of our products. Now we take this matter very seriously, and we understand everyone's concern. Of course, I should point out this is an AI translation, so there is a possibility this could be wrong, but I, I think directionally this looks correct. And the initial, yes, that's true. Oh, salient. Oh, that's interesting. So these Chinese developers are saying this could be true then, but it was on WeTap to link. So the Chrome version of CleanMaster was sold to a third party. On the date of the sale, they no longer have any form of control. Okay, they're saying it's not uh, that. Okay, and they're saying that it was because of their other one getting canned. Well, maybe. So let's try this out. Let's just see. Now, very possible, regardless of whether they're lying there or not, they will have probably scrubbed it, but let's see. Okay, so immediately our uh, search was taken over. No, actually, that's our new tab. That's actually what it was supposed to do. Uh, and we do have a WeTab AI and AI PowerPoint. So it does look like there's some features here, and it's taken that over. Now you can always find, if you have a Chrome extension and you want to look at the code, you can always find that within your user profile. And then we can go to extensions. And because we only have one extension, this is going to be pretty easy. And there have been a lot of versions of this. I already see quite a bit of code. I'm just going to download a code editor so that I can actually read this. Okay, so now that we've got our IDE installed, we can just open this in Visual Studio Code. 
and we can take a look and see is there anything anything weird going on here. It's quite a big uh, JS, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, sorry, the usual. Because minification is normal, obfuscation is not. So I'm actually going to throw this through a JS beautifier. API obtain tool list. Nothing in here that's instantly throwing up red flags. So it does appear that the current version of WeTab uh, was cleaned up, but there, I still have a lot of questions with that response. Like, I've never heard of the idea of if you're going to sell your Chrome extension and the legit one is running out of the same Chrome account, no, I, I don't believe that. That seems really sketchy to me. So it's possible that some of these were getting bought up. Uh, that has been known to happen. It's also possible that that's just a, a technique so that they can go back to what they were doing. Yeah, and it, it feels like, uh, yeah, because here in this security merge report, they're explicitly calling out uh, WeTab, and they're trying to say that WeTab didn't do that. Well, maybe it doesn't now because they got caught, but I, I, I don't know if I believe that. Uh, maybe the problem is they were sharing their Chrome Store account with the malicious developers, but my personal opinion is you don't get a second chance if you do something like that. If you sell your extension to a malware developer without telling anyone, I, I honestly, I, I don't care who who's distributing the malware. I'm just going to kind of think of you as both uh, not really being very trustworthy and avoid uh, your products. I did want to share another way that I've seen malicious extensions get distributed. Let's just go. I think this is going to go to Mediafire and let's see if we get any of these kind of ads that I'm looking for. But with the infamous download buttons, one of the common things, because it's cross-platform, just as deadly and less detectable, is you'll find a Chrome extension. Let's just give this a second to load. This is Link for Ties, which I think is less malware-ridden than AdFly was, but it's also far more confusing. Like, I, I don't even understand how I... Get, I, uh, but I want the download. I don't want to. Okay, so we could get link. Oh, skip. It's there. Okay. Okay, that seems like some sort of hell. It's like, well, you got to click. What? I have to wait an hour if I don't want to pay? I've never seen such an. But this is what we actually wanted Media Fire. Is this one real? Okay, it is. Okay, it's a real one. Okay, that's a PDF adware. I'm just going to have to keep going until we get the one we want. Okay, well, given my incredibly bad luck, or this is one time I cannot actually find such an example, I'll just uh, pull a clip from one of my other videos where I encountered this. But basically what happens is you'll get a prompt that either appears to be the download, and then it'll say it's some sort of free security extension when you install it, uh, the extension will not really do anything useful for the user, but it will get installed, and they'll forget about it, because why wouldn't they forget about it? Ultimately, uh, the extension sits there, collects their data, and hopes that they don't realize. It's another way that these extensions, which are kind of becoming a growing problem, and to be fair, there's a lot of reasons why you would want to install extensions. There's plenty of useful ones. But I, I do really suggest keeping the number of extensions to a minimum. And if you are going to use any extensions, make sure you're getting the real one. Like if we go to Chrome Store, let's see how many fake uBlocks we get. Uh, uBlock are, is this actually real? Okay, it is. You can tell because I mean, we know who makes that one. It looks like they got rid of the fake. Uh, this one doesn't look quite right. uBlock v3? Offered, yeah, that, that doesn't look, that doesn't look quite right. Just always make sure uh, you're not, you're getting, uh, the funniest thing would be if it actually put ads on. Let's just see, does it actually even block ads? Looks like it does block ads at least. But of course that makes sense because it's easier to get caught if it doesn't. So it simply has a fixed rule list and then... The background JS should be send message. So far, this just looks like a really lazy ripoff, but I would not trust it because what will probably happen is this will eventually get swapped out for something that's uh, less legit. 
So I don't think this is quite finished yet, but it does look like there's some planned uh, scraping functionality. Uh, so I, I wouldn't install this one. So do check, uh, make sure if you got extensions, make sure they're the real ones. Luckily, with especially it's like one of the good things of Manifest V3, if an extension suddenly needs a new permission, it's now going to have to tell you. So if it has something that uh, d doesn't quite make sense, like I don't think this is necessary, that could be an indication. Like this one only has one permission. But if it suddenly, let's say the next day, it needs to read your browsing history in every website, I, I might be a bit suspicious. So that's going to be all for me for now. Bye.